So I've said that it's difficult to escape the pleasure trap, but it's not impossible. And one of the very powerful tools that turns out to be helpful at helping people escape the pleasure trap is fasting. We have a new book, it'll be out in June, it's called Can Fasting Save Your Life? And it discusses everything about fasting in terms of the research that's been done by us and others, procedures necessary to carry out fasting safely and effectively, and what the outcomes uh, of fasting have been and, and can be. There's a number of different types of fasting available today. Here's a chart that lists uh, many of them, including uh, time-restricted eating and alternate day fasting and some fasting mimicking diets of various uh, sorts. Uh, but what I'm gonna be speaking about today is water-only fasting, where water-only is consumed up to 40 days uh, in a controlled setting under supervision. And we do that at the True North Health Center where prolonged water-only fasting is kind of what we do. It's the complete abstinence of all substances except water in an environment of complete rest. It turns out that resting is an important part of fasting because excess activity during fasting will increase the breakdown of protein through a process called gluconeogenesis. So in order to maximize fat loss and minimize lean tissue loss, uh, rest is an important consideration. There are many mechanisms by which fasting is thought to be helpful to people. The most obvious is obviously weight loss. People lose an average of a pound a day in fasting. And as we'll discuss a little bit later, that weight is uh, preferentially focused on fat and in particular visceral fat, the type of fat that has the tumor-like effect of promoting inflammation. People also go through naturesis in fasting. This is the selective elimination of excess sodium that accumulates in people's bodies because they're eating salty foods. That salt uh, forces the body to retain fluid in order to neutralize the toxic effect of excess sodium. And so uh, the excess salt causes lots of problems like high blood pressure and, and, and congestive heart failure, non-healing wounds, osteoporosis and other problems. Uh, in fasting, the body selectively mobilizes that material and eliminates it. And along with this excess salt coming out is also the excess water that goes along with it. So blood pressures drop, uh, respiratory function improves, cardiac function improves, non-healing wounds start to heal, uh, and even changes in taste neurotation. So the cravings that get set up, the drug-like cravings that people have for excess sodium are mitigated. Um, and the taste of whole natural foods becomes more desirable. Uh, human beings uh, living in modern society are actually quite toxic. That is, if you do a fat biopsy, you would find hundreds of different chemicals accumulating inside the cells of people, PCBs, dioxin, pesticide residues, heavy metals, intermediary products of metabolism, all kinds of nasty stuff. And during fasting, the body rapidly mobilizes and eliminates those materials more efficiently than it does even uh, in the feeding state. And part of that detoxification process is involving enzyme systems. Enzymatic induction is in, happens during fasting where those enzyme systems are induced and actually persist. So you're better at detoxing, not just during fasting, but in the subsequent days and weeks after fasting, you're still um, detoxifying faster. And in fact, fasting is cumulative. So every time you fast, whether it's the intermittent fasting that you do on a daily basis or the occasional longer fast you do under supervision, um, those systems of detoxification are thought to be enhanced, improved, uh, and in increased over time. Uh, enzyme systems are also used for mobilizing macronutrients like fat and glycogen and protein. And just like a trained athlete gets more and more efficient at mobilizing glycogen stores, uh, people that are fasting periodically get more and more efficient at mobilizing those nutrient, macronutrient stores as well as the detoxifying systems. Fasting also uh, reduces insulin resistance. Uh, most of our type 2 diabetics are able to uh, see significant uh, improvement uh, in the long run. Uh, with insulin resistance and, and diabetic controls, um, most type 2 diabetics are able to eventually achieve normal blood sugar levels without the use of medications. Uh, during fasting, uh, uh, 
And as a consequence of fasting, insulin initially goes down, but then uh, homo IR insulin resistance goes up during the initial refeeding as an adaptation coming back out of fasting. And then when you follow people much later, you notice there's a significant reduction below baseline. But it's very important to understand that insulin resistance is actually slightly higher as you come off a of fast. So why, why it's so important that appropriate refeeding after the fast be uh, introduced. Probably one of the most important parts of fasting is that initial refeeding. That's why at True North Health Center, we have patients stay at least half the length of the fast for recovery feeding. So that can be done in a controlled, effective, and safe manner. Too rapid a return to feeding after fasting can be very dangerous, particularly on long-term fasting can result in serious consequences like post-fasting edema or refeeding syndrome, which ultimately could be damaging or, or fatal. Um, Another mechanism by which fasting is thought to be helpful is alterations in the gut leakage and gut microbiome issues. Um, the microbiome has been recognized to be a critical part of human health. You have maybe as much as five pounds of creatures living in your intestinal tract. These are living creatures, uh, bacteria, protozoa, et cetera, that are intimately involved in balancing each other out and helping you immunologically as well as producing necessary nutrients like vitamin K, et cetera. Alterations in the gut microbiome sometimes occur when people use antibiotic therapy or they're eating a diet that's high in sugar and animal foods. People, for example, on meat-based diets have completely different organisms than people on plant-based diets. And the people on they're eating sugars and processed foods, the waste products of their bacteria is different than people eating whole natural foods. So when you think about five pounds of creature, a trillion creatures swimming around in your gut, eating, swimming, and defecating, you got to remember that what they poo in you is depending on what you feed them. So it's very important if you want to have a healthy microbiome, which is composed of, it, it's thought to be over a thousand different strain of organisms, and you want them pooing fertilizer in you like vitamin K instead of toxic waste like TMA, which becomes trimethylamine oxidase and is thought to contribute to heart disease and other, other problems. You wanna make sure what you're feeding your organisms are a whole, whole plant food SOS free diet. The autonomic nervous system is the part of the nervous system that controls all the things you don't think about. For example, if you went out and ran very hard but your heart didn't speed up to pump more blood, you would die. But people don't die because they forget to tell their heart to speed up because the heart speeds up automatically. And what makes the heart speed up automatically is the autonomic nervous system, which controls all the things you don't think about, um, including vasodilation, including the bowel function and movement, um, mic duration, et cetera, is and controlled by this part of the automatic or autonomic nervous system. Well, when that autonomic nervous system gets out of balance, for example, if you have hypersympathetic tonia where the sympathetic tone is set too high, you can begin having symptoms like, for example, constipation. Or if the parasympathetic tone was set too high, you might have symptoms like diarrhea. Well, imbalances of the autonomic nervous system cause pain and debility. And we've, we've got hundreds of different healing systems designed to try to correct those imbalances. That's how these different natural healing systems often affect our symptoms, whether it's chiropractic or osteopathic manipulation, massage, biofeedback, homeopathy. Uh, so many of these natural therapies work by trying to balance out the autonomic nervous system relaxation techniques, meditation, massage, et cetera. Some work better than others, but overall that's the mechanism by which many of them are able to help alleviate some of the symptoms that they're used for. Well, in my experience, the most effective way of rebooting the autonomic nervous system is fasting. Fasting works like rebooting the hard drive in a computer. Uh, it will often, you know, hey, you shut the computer off, you don't know why, but now when you turn it back on, it's working better. Well. Same thing seems to happen with fasting. You shut everything down with fasting, you reboot with a healthy diet, and now a lot of these imbalances seem to be resolving. Uh, it is interesting that um, the Jews and the Jains and the Hindus and the Muslims and the Christians uh, don't all agree on everything. But they do agree on one thing, and they all have a tradition about fasting. And it's probably because when you fast, it changes the way you relate to yourself and the world around you. You can't help but have an impact in how you feel and how you think. 